Hey folks, Flip here, and welcome back to Empire's SMP. My goal today is to create a massive storage room because my starter house is, well, starting to evolve into a monster. And I have a ton more tunnels to dig, so I definitely need space to store all the materials, along with making some new friends in the nether. Shout out to Supernova for the amazing crossover fan art. Now be sure to leave a like and please subscribe. Let's talk about the elephant in the cavern. The cobblestone farm I built? Yeah, it's gone. It blew up again while I was building the super smelter, so I took it all down. So today it's time to build a new one that hopefully works. For starters, I need a lot more obsidian. I recently went back over to the swamp and killed many a slime. So we've got some slime blocks to work with. Traveling to the highest peak, for the freshest ice. And finally, 14 buckets of lava. Before, before I can build the new one, I do need to take the rest of this one down. Water's now gone. And now for the glass. Starting off by extending the current item storage system, but thankfully we can still use the entire thing I already created, just with some new water sources. Thankfully in comparison, this farm is absolutely tiny, where each layer just copies the others going all the way up. Waterlog the stairs, lava in the corners. Let's hope I did this right. Coral fan in there, it died. We put the minecart over there and we put the TNT here. Oh, things are exploding. Cobblestone is happening. Oh, we have a working cobblestone generator. I have an egg for you in this trying time where we now have Il Mango's cobblestone egg and it's working great, but no chicken. I did just burn through 28 buckets of lava and water though. So it's probably a good idea to fill this back up because now that I'm actually making cobblestone for sure, the super smelter is gonna come in very handy. Definitely a start to refuel. Go, go, go. Next up, I have a very important diplomatic mission where we need to bring one block of copper, a book and quill, right there and lastly an item frame but since i just built the egg i don't want it to blow itself up so i'm gonna turn it off for now come on snort we're off on an adventure so far goblin adventures are very very safe there's nothing to worry about Has anybody bought any pickles who put dirt around my pickles no pickle sales yet nobody respects this cucumbersome profession here we find ourselves at false symmetry space hopefully a great trade partner in the future now i am in desperate need and i mean desperate need of iron Snort, wait here. So in proper goblin timekeeping fashion, we place a copper block and she has to get back to us before it ages. Here we have the best trade deal. False, goblins need iron, three stacks of blocks. You have until the copper block ages. Return the copper as proof of timekeeping. Payments, three stacks of copper blocks as reward. Do not let it fully age, you have been warned. Goblin out. To the next stop, Snort, let's go. All the way down to the desert. The second component needed for TNT. Definitely not related at all to that sign not aging. Nope, I'm definitely not the explosive guy this season. I would never. Snort, I gotta get some sand. You hang out here. We've got a full shulker box to fill. And there we go, one full shulker box of sand. Now I have a bit of a confession to make. All boars are good boars. And there's definitely a boar that I have been neglecting. Oh wait, hold up here. We got another zombie villager. But in order to maintain the goblin boar alliance, we need to provide a safe home for all boars. Next, I'd like to create a hogland ranch in the nether to help sustain a herd of hoglands. But first, I've got to clear out some trees. With some trees cleared out now, we've got a little bit more space to work with. So I'm thinking we take the mangrove roots. You are not a hoglet. Oh no, the baby. Uh, buddy, I'll have a home for you soon. Right, come back here. Come back here, baby. Hoglet. Sorry, sorry, sorry. We're not doing that. We're not doing that. We're not doing, I'm not doing that. We're not doing that. Trying to preserve the hoglands. But maybe after we have a habitat set up for them. Definitely not the baby piggies. Uh, they murdered my boy. For starters, we can throw a big gate right over in here. None of them should run through the nether portal, but we can block it off anyways. And finally, finishing off the habitat right here. Now I'm thinking three different pens for our hoglins is 
probably the safest way to go where we can have three different gates so if one herd gets a little too big i can at least safely still work in the other two areas to sustain the herds we need a lot of the crimson fungus because i believe after we breed them once they should no longer despawn and for safety i will also get a warped fungus the one time i actually want to find hoglins they are nowhere ah not the ones i need wait can i give them crimson fungus i can oh it just makes them grow big probably not the best bet right now oh they're so dangerous getting rid of the baby ah, get him ah, ah, the parents are here look at that beautiful specimen a hoglin the first one for the sanctuary come on all right buddy come on oh there's one on the wall perfect yes nope 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 everything's going wrong everything's going wrong the hoglin's on the loose i'm in the pen now oh the first one's in this is a lot more dangerous than i thought it would be you want to come in this way ah! okay yep just walk in here don't be scared by the nether portal it's fine ah, at least i know i'm safe here new hoglin in tow and maybe we could just get him to follow us over here yes they're in easy and make a baby the first baby hoglin look at him he's adorable he definitely won't kill me right ah no 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 oh everything's bad everything's go bad okay he's in no he got out he's definitely not in okay let's do ah, of course all right well oh this is gonna be bad there's my pants there's my stuff where's my other stuff oh it's in with the baby it's in with the baby you give me no choice i'm putting down the warp fungus i want my stuff back now are we all gonna play nice no no we're not we're not gonna play nice i've got my ears back and this time we're doing it right we've got a full base camp set up here for all of everything that we could ever need we got bones to be able to make more of the crimson fungus and if i stand all the way back here nope they can still get me definitely they can still get me okay well at least we got another baby this is the start of something new i put some of our warp fungus over here i don't think i actually need this one but this will keep our little base camp safe from the hoglins eventually we will breed them into the perfect hoglin species that project will have to wait for another day as i have a very serious issue i've turned into mythical sausage when it comes to storage i've slowly added barrels into my walls and they're filling up as you can see i need a storage room so we take some of the gunpowder and the sand that i just mined i want to build my storage room into the side of the cavern so we have a bunch of space to work with and i've always loved this spot back here i think it's finally time to get rid of this waterfall but we'll replace it later with something even better with that out of the way i want to start digging back into the side here and if we go in at an angle ooh, iron Adding some TNT right here into the center, we should be able to hollow out a pretty good sized cavern. And the first is off. Yes. Now I just need to sort out a little bit more space for the shape of this thing. My idea is to create a central storage hall going in and then branching off into three separate sections that we can use for different types of materials. With the explosions doing most of the work, I came back in and started to clear up the shape of the entire room. With the classic, fill your inventory with new blocks, trying to build a place to store your blocks. And then the place to store your blocks needs to be even bigger because you've got an even more blocks from digging out to store your blocks in places where you have blocks. Lore. I don't even know how many chests I'm gonna need for this, but since we just got a bunch of crimson logs, let's start out with 128 chests. We'll have a big entrance here coming into the cavern, but then I wanna start stacking them up going all the way back along here. For now, I would like to go four tall on the chests and then leave some space if we need to, to add a fifth. That was exactly 128 chests. That, that wasn't planned. Side wings are now in place as well, and each of them is about 100 chests, which means I now have over 300 chests worth of stuff we can fill. But first, we've got to figure out a design for this thing so it doesn't look so awful. With all of the mining and block breaking I've done today, you'd think I'd have everything I need. But no, never. That's not how this game works. I want to use deep slate and cobble deep slate for the floor of the storage room. So I might as well try and find some diamonds while I'm at it. All of this deep slate, but no diamonds. 
Oh, well, let's go build the storage room. I'm making this one up as we go today. But let's start with some deep slate bricks on both sides. Then we can start with a little bit of cobble. Deep slate working its way in. After that, some of the silk touch deep slate on its side. And finally, in the center, we use the lightest top texture. We'll have to get lighting sorted later because it's very dark here in the cavern. But I think that's a pretty good floor texture. Now I just got to replace underneath the chest and carry it around the rest. Next, I want to frame in the chest that we're creating by using some copper at the base, strips of mangrove going all the way up, and we can make a little pattern right here with slab, trapdoor, trapdoor, slab, blah, blah, blah. We're looking pretty good, but we've still got a lot of space above to fill in. So maybe the dripstone starts it off, then we carve out another layer here. And add in a little sandstone, a little endstone, and some endstone bricks, which will really brighten up the ceiling so it feels even larger inside. And maybe to blend that, we need to do some spikes. We always want more spikes here. Yeah, spikes. Being a cave goblin and all, I feel most comfortable inside of a cave. So I brought the cave into the storage room. Both sides are finished up and ready to go. Gotta fix that. Very, very ready to go. Definitely, definitely ready to go. Do you hear that? <gasps> That was a lore. Just kidding. It was just the sound of my stomach as I'm down to one pork chop. I'm sorry, piggies. It's that time again. Whatever secret club the pigs that hang out up in here belong to, I want to be part of that group of friends. But for now, it's time to eat. Come on, buddy. It's time for a barbecue. You just, no, oh, you turned away. That's, you don't, it's, oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, look at this. There's two guys hanging in a cave, cooking some pork chops. The Goblin Empire. Yeah, it's a, it's a good time. Oh, he turned towards the fire. Was that a lore? I don't know. Watch out for the locals in the cavern. Watch out up there. Hello. Hello. Uh, yeah, you, you seem oh. to have a few of those issues. Oh, yeah, there's a... Uh, <laughs> oh, yeah, the skeletons escaped the farm. Got it. All right. Okay. Welcome to the Goblin Empire. I just about found the entrance. <laughs> and, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's looking a little bit more formal since last time I came here. This place is amazing. So you are the man... I want to see because I need, I, I think it'll go great with Goblin. It's bright, giant neon light signs all over the place. We got, mm -hmm. got one over there and I heard you got the frog lights. I, I I like the stone sign. I like less the fact that there's a creeper on top of there, but he despawned, so it's all good. I have plenty of frog lights for you. Uh, and this, pretty much about half the stock I have Ooh. on me. Oh. I think we can hook you up. Oh, yes, yes, yes. The ochre frog lights. If I get like four stacks of those, three stacks of the pearl and three stacks of the verdant. That seems pretty doable. Um, In exchange, I I need lots of stone. How about I leave you with like four shulker boxes for that amount of frog lights? I think that seems about fair. And if you can just fill those up with natural stone and drop them off at my plate, that would be perfect. Uh, yeah, definitely. That sounds like a deal. Well, it is a good thing I'm running the cobblestone farm and I've got a little bit smelted down in here. I was planning to trade this with the villagers for some more emeralds, but the frog lights are definitely more important. We got two shulker boxes done. I just got to fill those last two for them. I just got all the stone smelted up for pick serves here, but but I've realized the system I made is not that great. Over time, the minecart loading in all the smeltable things just runs empty. But thankfully, somebody in my Discord by the name Ruined Wolf had an excellent idea. So now with this system, we're looking at the hopper minecart itself. It's going to be pulling items out of this chest. And anytime it gets more signal strength than this guy right over here that I need to get up to level three. And there we go. So say we want some smooth stone. We can put these stacks in. This loads up to... I did it wrong. Which is because this right here, there's a lever. Yeah, that can instead go on the bottom. There we go. Everything gets loaded. It returns almost full, fills back up and goes up. This way, every single one of these furnaces will always get items. I've got shulker boxes of stone ready to deliver to Pixarifs. So let's head over to his base. Excuse me? A baby zombie. He just converted my nitwit. No, no children. Thankfully, Pixurfs just lives right across the valley, so we can just drop him off right over here. I don't know where his house is, but I'm going to assume it's the... I thought I lived in a really broken down place. Speaking of which, I almost fell in there. 
Three shulker boxes ready, and a few spikes to go along with it. Let's go home, Snork. We've got a storage room to build. But first, I am a goblin after all, and I do like mud blocks, which I need a lot of wheat for. And I'm not a bad person, so I will replant it all. I'll even fix up all the little broken spots. It'll be like we were never here. Snort, we can make so much more mud now. Moving on to creating the storage room itself, we've got a decent amount of mud in here, but not nearly enough packed mud. Hopefully that'll be enough. Keeping with the theme, I need a bunch of mangrove slabs, hook planks, and I'm regretting using all my spruce logs to make chests because I need a lot of spruce trapdoors. Oh, that should do it. I like spruce trap doors. Okay, they're so good. They're beautiful. They're the best plug ever. Minecraft builds can get very boring if they're the same thing over and over again. So today I'd also like to try using some crimson wood just for a new red color. I was able to gather everything I needed for my chest, but trees don't grow in the cavern. So I had to run out and gather up some spruce and visiting the dark oak forest to gather up some brown mushroom blocks and taking the secret tunnel to Catherine's for one essential bit of white wool. I thought there was a monster slayer around here. Why are there so many mobs? I'll just do it myself. Lastly, I'm going to need a lot of note blocks, but this right here should be everything. I'm always amazed at how expensive note blocks are. It's a full chest with redstone dust in the middle. But with that, it's time to get into the build. To make things a little safer, I want to extend our walkway out. This way we can trick the Minecraft mob AI by running a rail across here and they shouldn't walk over it. Keyword shouldn't. Building the front of the hall, I wanted to copy the idea of the main cavern entrance using the glazed terracotta pattern, next focusing on a large tower over here on the side to help break up some of the symmetry. This won't be accessible though, so if we do some trapdoors back here, campfire on top, and some ochre frog lights, ochre, 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 I don't know, we can make it look like somebody lives in there. Next, we can take another play out of the goblin building book and use the same design from the starter house to create a nice looking tower up here. Then adding a cover to the top of the tower before moving on to create some more homes jammed into the side of the building with one final home going in right back here where I'd like to brighten it up a touch with some more frog lights. This way, each element of the build feels a little unique against each other's. Speaking of which, let's throw some white blocks on top and I can divide the roof into a few sections. We can divide the harsh transition using some of our trap doors in here. Next, I wanna throw in all of the crimson blocks just to change up the roof color. Mostly finished up now, but a few more little details we can add in, like some glow berries to bring some more light to the build and also a little green. And of course, a spore blossom for the beautiful particles. Next, I thought adding some moss all the way up here could be fun. One idea I've been playing with but haven't tried out quite yet is in order to make this a little bit more mob safe over here, I want to turn it into a pond because there are so many zombies everywhere. Look at them. They're everywhere. I am done with you. That means in order to access the house, we need a little bit of a walkway. Using some slabs, trapdoors, and a few stairs. That should do. Next, I just need to dig this out, get some more fences down here, and fill it in with water. Some more areas like this around the base should really help to make things a lot safer. One final touch for the exterior-ish is I want to get rid of the torches on the inside. Things are a touch dark in here, but I thought if we brought in almost like a fluorescent light on the floor, we could add in the ochre frog lights. It is very bright, so trap doors? Next option to detorchify is to hide them in the ceiling like this. I'm not sure which I like more. Let me know down in the comments. I'll just live with both for now as we're finishing it up. But you can see here the rail line actually works at stopping the mobs. So it should be fairly creeper safe in here. But there we have it. The storage room exterior is now finished up. It's time to get back inside and finish up the back of the storage room before we move in. Next up, I need to connect the storage room to the road for the transportation lore.
And much better. Oh, missed him. Now it's ready. But I think I want to expand the pond even more into something more like this. I just now realized I made a heart. So you better like the video. Lastly, to make the storage room a little safer, I want to create a mangrove root wall all the way to the lava. In goblin imagination lore, mangroves don't burn by lava. They're not orange, but they still don't burn. I swear I might stop adding details after this, but for now, I want to add a little bit more moss over here. That is much better. Next up, I need to do a lot of digging, but unfortunately my pickaxe is very broken. But look at Goblin from up here. Oh, this is looking so good. I swear I'm filling up the cavern a lot quicker than I thought I would. It's time to go up the walls eventually. But for now, I need to go to the skeleton spawner. What was that? There's a, there's spooky sounds, spooky sounds. I don't like it, but time to repair the pickaxe. And there we go, off to the nether. Today I'm after a few pieces of ancient debris and that's not the way down. Everything down here is lava. I just want to find ancient debris. And more lava and much better down to Y14. I've only got a little bit of TNT, but hopefully this works. Hey, there we go. I only needed two. Oh, there's more over here. Wow, today is a good day. Five ancient debris and 40 gold. This will be plenty. Back over in the rail network hub, I want to start a brand new rail connecting all the way over to the Eastern empires of Gemini Tay. And we can use this as a stop over to Scott as well in the future. I'm a little worried about running into water as we travel since there's a lot of lakes to go through. Oh, there is. I just dug into a geode. Nice. But with all the iron down here, I think this means we are at the perfect level. And I want to be very careful to not destroy the geodes, so let me clear out some space. Today, we're going to be using the ridiculously simple tunnel bore design by Borkin, which I will link down in the description below. I may be a smart goblin, but I'm not this ridiculously smart. Just handsome, good looking, and all those other characteristics, and very humble. I'm really hoping this amount of space here is enough to fit it. It's a pretty long boy. Let's get building. We need a very safe working environment before testing this because it is the number one priority after all. Ignore the arrow on my arm. I can still be an adventurer. Ah! Should have a full clear line here. <gasps> it's working. Yes. So the tunnel boring begins and we are going east. So that's, that's good. <gasps> We've already found a cavern. One small leap for goblin kind. One set of giant ears. I don't know what else to say for the second part. Oh, we're in business. Oh, that's not good. Oh, that's not good. Oh, that's really not good. Goblin innovation might need some work. Take two is ready to go here. Machine has been rebuilt, so hopefully it works. Oh, that's a good sign. Now we're moving. This might not be the quickest way to create a tunnel, but it's about style points. I spent an hour using the tunnel bore, gathering up all the materials along the way that I could while pushing forwards. And here we have the tunnel itself. I got a bunch of diamonds, iron, and gold. Oh, I missed some iron. Before we move on too far with the tunnel bore, I'm really curious to know how far I've made it already and how far I have to go. Oh no, this is, oh, that's not looking good. I was at X350 underground. I haven't even made it past Joel. Oh no, how far do I have to go? Here we are at dawn right over that way. And if I were to continue the tunnel bore in a straight line, it would pop us out right about where the creeper is. I've only got 1400 blocks to go. So at this rate, that's about four hours. Sounds like we got a project on our hands. We'll have to continue that project later, however, as my storage room is so overflowing in here. So I wanna redirect the focus back to this guy where we still need to finish off the entire back section. First on the inside, I want to expand this dripstone network we have going so far to fill in around the edge of the central room. Excuse me, I am trying to build over here. Here inside of the center, I'd like to add in jungle planks. In the center, I want to start vaulting the ceiling with some more of our dripstone. But to give it some more structure, we can also add in a little granite as well as some bricks more towards the center. That way it just looks a little more put together. 
Next is adding in all of our dripstone spikes. Next up, the back room. First, changing out the entire wall to be our oak and birch. Next, removing the floor. From here, I want to add deep slate across the entire middle and breaking the edges up a little bit with it being on its side. Now I've got to deal with lighting because torches does not look good. But maybe instead the ochre frog lights. And from here, we bring in that brick and granite for the rest of it, which turns into something a bit like this. The most important room in the entire storage room, because my pile of gold has just been sitting out over here. And even more importantly, I've got so much more gold ready to be broken down. You really know you're a builder when you avoid breaking tall grass. I didn't bring the fortune hoe. I'll be back. Well, the fortune pick. Just pillaring up with deep slate gold ore. And time to break it all back down. And I'm bringing this with me too. I need something else to put here though. If you have any ideas, let me know. But one of my main goals for the season is going to require a ton of blocks of raw gold as I want to fill this entire back room we've created here with a solid mass of raw gold. And that's a pretty good start already. These don't count, but for some extra details, the gold pile has begun. We don't want any of that stupid smelted gold. You can get that automatically. In goblin lore, only raw gold matters because you have to mine it with your hand. But that journey will have to continue into the next episode. Please be sure to leave a like down below if you enjoyed today's video. Subscribe if you're new. But with that, my friends, I'll catch y'all on the flip side. Because I've got a storage room to organize. It's going to be so much fun.